One of the greatest skills a photographer can have is understanding the raw file and what you can really get out of it. If you look at these rather unimpressive images taken during a tour of the Louis Barajan house in Mexico City, you'll see some cool moments, but nothing really stands out. I was just having some fun with my wife, trusting my instincts and shooting from the hip. So how do I go from this image that is clearly too yellow to an amazing portrait with complementing colors? What's going on guys? My name is Corey Vanderplue at Corey Photo on Instagram and Twitter. Let's break this down. So you can see here all these photos, this is me walking to the house, are all very basic. You can see me waiting in line, just testing the camera, and this was actually the first portrait we got to. Um, looks a little too yellow for me. Tried a couple other options. Here you can actually see we're on tour with a bunch of other people. Great exposure. <laughs> um, but you can see the architecture is fantastic and really cool. So there are these little pockets that we were able to shoot, even though we were on tour with like 60 other people. Uh, the tour is going on just behind me while I'm shooting this, trying to sneak away and get our own private moments, try something a little weird, a little wacky, but you know, really working within the constraints. I'm not trying anything crazy. I didn't even think I'd be coming away with photos here, let alone six polished photos that I use in my portfolio. I was just kind of having fun. And the moral of this story is just shoot from the hip, have fun, experiment, be excited to fail. You know, just shoot for the sake of shooting. And you see there's two, everyone's trying to get a photo with this cool light coming in. Um, this is like one of the more iconic uh, sections of the house. And if you Google the Louis Barajan house, you can see that a lot of people have shot here. A lot of people use, you can see there's the iconic light coming through. Even Nowness did a cool video on it. A lot of pressure to perform and get amazing images, but at the same time, I didn't really care. I just wanted to have some fun, shoot some photos, maybe get one good one, and just have some fun with my wife. Um, but as you scan through here, you can really see that none of these are that impressive. They're just kind of goofy, fun photos. Very basic. Having a little quirky moments and seeing what comes out. I mean, the light here was really cool. A really cool location. But how do we take it a step further? So if we go all the way back up to where we were, let's start with this photo. How did I go from this to that? You can see I really just, a little too yellow, and it's not like there's any blue. This is really just a stained glass window right here, and she's posing in front of it. It looks like I did this cool color complementary with cyans and yellows, two very contrasting colors, but it works amazing. All I really did was work with what we have in the raw file. A lot of yellow, and you can see that the white is actually turning blue here. There's no blue lights in there. That's just an illusion by contrast. So let's see how I went from this and polish it up into a portfolio-worthy portrait. So you see here, here's all my layers, flip it on and off, wildly different. So let's see how we got here. I'm gonna turn all of these layers off, open everything up and just strip it down and we'll go step by step. So there wasn't actually a lot of stuff done here. It looks like a lot, but it's really just skin cleanup and then my, my classic contrast moves and color correction. So we start here with the background. All I'm doing is rotating it and making it uh, symmetrical to my, to my eye. I did a little bit of hair cleanup by my wife's request. She didn't like that gap. Very simple, just using the clone tool and then taking out another part of her bang and putting it over top. From there, I just lightened the little dark area and then I worked into my skin. If you wanna see a full skin retouching tutorial, check out the link in the description. Uh, and then my dodge and burn, but you can see even that made such a tremendous difference, cleaned out all of the distractions. Uh, anything that wouldn't be there in three months, I left. Just really clean skin. Another skin finalized here. And then what I did was clean up the, the flyaways around here. You see it's a little messy around here. And it was actually a very simple process. Um, you can see it's very yellow. So all I did was shift command end for a new layer. I hold, held my B tool and got this beautiful yellow in here. And then with just a low opacity brush, let's say something around 30%, I just kind of painted it in and got rid of all of the messiness. See here. And then once you see that all the hair is gone, then you just have to be a little bit more 
specific, turn it into a mask, delete the mask by pushing command delete, and then going in with a fine brush, taking your time, and just painting it in. Oh, you gotta get a higher opacity brush, and then just painting it in. Now that process will take a, a bit of time and some effort, but as you can see, when you're finished, it is well worth it. Well worth it. And it just, this was a huge difference. It's very distracting around the mouth, just cleaning up those lines. And then you wanna leave a little bit of flyaway so it doesn't look too fake. Uh, but it is just simplifying the image. You wanna know how to simplify the image? Check out the video in the description. The real basic stuff here. And then some more flyaways. Again, distraction, 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 distraction in the eyes. Just getting rid of the stuff that your eyes are drawn to and cleaning it right up. And that's it. You see that did a lot there, but made it very simple and just stripped away the elements that distracted your eye. Now we go into our color treatment, which is something I've done in the past and showed you how to do it with uh, uh, an action. But here we are just going layer by layer. So this might look a bit extreme and like I flattened it out, but I always do my contrast layers first. Wow, very cool. So you can see that this becomes really yellow, almost too yellow. But I had a plan and I anticipated this. So what do I do first? First I see that this is a little too inky and around the edges. So what I do is I take a curves layer and you can see I boost it way up underneath. And then that way, well, this is way too much information. But then when I delete this layer, I'm taking a large brush with a low opacity and I'm just dotting it in where it's a little too black. And this takes some time as well. You can't, this takes a lot of massaging and a lot of practice. And my only tip here is to use a low opacity brush, but you can see how I'm painting it in. So if I delete these and show you that those moves came in, I actually darkened it down there because it got too big. But now you can see the highlights. And that's just a massive difference in terms of bringing up the lower mids and making the blacks not so cr crunchy. And then I add my hue and saturation, but I noticed something's missing. But it just didn't feel right. Something was missing. It's too yellow. Yellow is not a very attractive color uh, when used incorrectly. But a simple move like this can balance it right out. Now it looks like a balanced image. Funny how when it was like this, the yellow is overpowering. Almost the weight of the image is on this left side, which is still a cool image, but it's just not there. So just adding this little bit of cyan made all the difference in the world. And let me show you how I got there. So all I did was take a color balance and I just cranked this shit as hard as I could to make it as blue as I could. And then it's as simple as deleting the mask and with a full opacity brush, because you can adjust it later, just paint that in. I know this might seem a little aggressive. I love the spill onto the shoulder too, but like, oh, that could not have been simpler. Then you can go in and refine it. Uh, Maybe get some blue on the hair. Maybe that's a little too much. Bring the opacity down and massage it in so it's a little bit on the hair because you don't want it to, you want it to have some natural bleed so it looks real. And that's pretty much that simple. You have the blue on there. It's already a completely balanced image. Just give it a little bit of brighten and you're done. Now I throw the grain on and that's a finished image. This looks like, wow, how did he use the studio? How did he set up gels, multiple lights? No, strip it down. Much more simple than that. It's actually just a single yellow light, which was created by stained glass. And boom, a completely balanced, well-lit image. And you wouldn't have gotten this unless you knew what was in the raw material. So that is, it's all about experimenting, practicing, trying some new things, and coming away with a finished image. Because when I saw this image, I knew that there was gold in there. I didn't know it would turn out as, as well as it did, but I knew that there was some great stuff in there. So I'll show you the rest of the images really quick. I won't spend a lot of time because our focus was on this one. These ones are just about having fun and messing around and using the cool lights. But let's take a look at this one real quick. Um, 
This one was actually created as a comp. You can see here that this was actually the raw original. And then I added the right side, added the left side, flattened the layer and straightened out the lines. Brought in her hip just a little bit. Did my treatment layers, added my grain. <laughs> it's really a, quite a, an amazing before and after. If you look at the raw material, the way I shot it was getting as close as I can to get as much detail as I can and then shooting the sides and adding them in after. You can see that if I look at this and look at the size of this image, it's almost 10,000 pixels wide. It's a massive image. This looks almost like it would be a Hasselblad or a medium format, but it isn't. If you want to know how to really perfect this using more detail, and get more detail out of your cameras, check out my video, more detail. And it really breaks down how you can combine three images to make one. But that's really all you have it. You take some rather unimpressive images that we just had some fun shooting. And then it's about having your secondary eye. And what I mean by that is being able to go in into the post-production and into your raw files and seeing the potential that your images can actually have. Because it is crazy that I walked away with these portfolio worthy images from just having some fun with my wife and spending about 35 minutes on tour uh, of this beautiful home. I said, if you want to learn more about this home, just give Louise Berjan a quick search in YouTube. You will not be disappointed. There are some cool architecture and the story behind Louise Berjan is rather impressive. It's a, a cool story. And there you guys have it. Six portfolio worthy images from just having a fun 30 minutes with my wife in a cool space. Once you really realize how to understand raw images, you can get amazing stuff like this. And then it becomes less about luck and more about skill. If you guys want to learn more, please like and subscribe. Any questions, leave a comment. Happy shooting.